Hello everyone, welcome to another IndieX session. Uh, this week will be a truly filled uh, week with lots and lots of streaming and we, we're going to play dozens of IndieX finalists and uh, also the 10 finalists from PlayStation Talents. And it's a, a huge honor to have with me uh, the authors of Tiny Lands. Uh, Hello I'd like everyone, to, welcome yeah. to another IndieX session. I'd like session. to, oh, I just did something uh, this week strange. Will be, um, Give truly just a second, uh, which is a week with lots and lots of streams. I always, I always forget to do something. It's, it's really bad. Okay, so let me say hi to uh, Isaac and uh, Virgilio Cortez. How are you guys? Hello, Ricardo. Hi, how are you? I'm yeah. excited to be here. Yeah, we're really excited to have you here too. So um, I don't know if everybody that watched our um, our finalist real real videos noticed that Tiny Lens um, for me really stood out from dozens of genres and different games that were were there because it's a really unique game. And uh, I already know the answer to this, but there's a a, um, a slight curiosity on having a game based on what we call in Portugal. Uh, Jogo das Diferenças, uh, a game of differences, finding differences among two images. In this case, um, in a, r a rotatable um, scenario. And do you want to share with us what the greatest curiosity of having both of you developing a game like this is? <laughs> Can you can you hear me, guys? Uh, we can hear you right now. Okay, I, I was asking you if you if you could share with us um, what's really curious of having specifically the two of you uh, developing a game uh, which is a game of differences to find differences among two scenarios. Yes. All right. So I I think like Isaac has a little bit of delay on the audio. All right, so uh, the game is find the difference, right? Yeah. So one of the curiosity is that we are twins. So <laughs> the story of this game comes to, you know, like uh, we are you <laughs> since we were childs. Like uh, people ask on, what are the difference between you two? Uh, do you have any difference in your, and they put uh, side to side so to, to each other and start to find the difference. So <laughs> at some time, we on purpose with my brother start to using accessories so we look different, right? Because I, I usually wear a watch, my brother use glasses, and, and several kind of things that uh, at some moment uh, we, we we made that like like a, like a joke, right? So because and we say if we would have a dollar for each time that people ask if we are twins, uh, we will already be rich. So. <laughs> <laughs> so and that thing like uh, hey and and added to that well, we used to have a company back in El Salvador and we started to make mobile games uh, but uh, right now we're making our first like a PC console game and we decided to go to something like can be like small beautiful and uh, and with a with a purpose right so yeah. what better option that to make a simple find the difference game that can be aesthetic beautiful and you know like these days there are a lot of games that are really like uh, require you a lot of time to invest and uh, we usually don't have that time you know like if we are like you have a family you have two works you have to do a lot of things so you don't have time to invest in some big games that can that will require you like uh, like like a month or maybe like five hours daily just to to catch up with everything that is happening so we wanted to make like small game and simple game and that's Thailand. It's like a 3D and find a difference game with the mood of relaxing. Like there is no rush, there is no winner, no losers. There is just like an enjoyable uh, dioramas, which is another of the concept of the game. Like you have like these small dioramas, and it's as simple as the song. It's find the difference in a 3D dioramas. That's the core of Tiny Lands. You you just said that you have a small company in El Salvador. How was the, the how was it uh, developing software in El Salvador, and how was the adventure of uh, jumping to to Europe? Oh, um, 
Uh, so, as Abraham Virgilio mentioned, um, in El Salvador we had a, we established a company. Uh, we started applying in a, a nation national competition of video games in El Salvador mm -hmm. because it's a it's not a very developed environment for for video games. So it's like it's starting. There are like five studios in El Salvador in total, and we were one of them. So it's it's very it's a it's in a very early stage in El Salvador, but we won that contest contest and we started to develop uh, our first game, which was a platformer game for mobile. Uh, however, if we failed, <laughs> but uh, for us it was a, a, an amazing experience and we started to to continue in this game development mm -hmm. um, environment. We had this company. And then we had a, like a great opportunity because we found that in Spain, in, in Barcelona, there was a, a, a game accelerator program, which is a game BCN. And then we said with Abraham, hey, uh, um, let's apply uh, in this program so we can enhance our, our skills or development and or everything that, that we needed to, 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 to level up. So we applied and we got selected. Okay. The funny thing is that we got selected, but we didn't, we didn't have enough funds to come to, to Spain. <laughs> and, and we had to pitch uh, the game to another uh, uh, person uh, who invested in us, and we, we raised funds so we could travel here to, to, to Spain. That was on 2018. We came to this program. We uh, were six months. Uh, here in Barcelona, working in uh, a vertical slice of, of another game. And uh, after everything end, ended up, we came, we, we got back to El Salvador, right? So uh, after a few time, uh, we got uh, investors for the game. And in 2019, we came here again uh, to Barcelona. And now we establish the company here at Barcelona because we came with a, a special visa to to establish the company to be more time here, and we got uh, everything established. And then we started to work on the first uh, vertical slice or the first uh, prototype for for Tinylands. And this is how we are right now. How we get here? How we got here? And um, now with Tinylands, we are expecting to. To keep up and to, uh, of course, um, that this will can be beneficial for the company, and then we can still uh, we can uh, produce other um, titles in the future. Yeah. Abraham, I like that you... from from what I say, say is the uh, <clears throat> is also that we got a little bit of experience on game development, not mm -hmm. not making indie games exactly, but uh, back there in El Salvador and here in Barcelona, we were working on. Uh, you know, there is another niche that not many people exploit, which, which is uh, using the games for marketing. Mm -hmm. So we have actually right. developed a game for gamification. financial... Gamification purposes. Gamification. Yes. Yeah, 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 gamification yeah. purposes. Yeah. yeah, so we actually develop a game for kids that is, it helped them in financial uh, concepts. So it's very interesting that we can apply all the knowledge that we got in other kind of areas. Uh, so... We also make uh, game trailers for other small studios. Uh, so with all that experience and the game VCN accelerator program, we try to like uh, to compress all that knowledge and apply it on our, on our own game. So that's why we made a Polish version of Tiny Lands, which I think one of the best results that we could get is to get a publisher. Uh, and, and not easy, but uh, more quicker than we expected. Because at the moment that we are gonna, we were going to start to look for a publisher for the game because we understand that we cannot publish alone. This is a very competitive uh, market. World, market, and so it's, it's it's very like you need a publisher if yeah. you want to have succeed with I, your game. I still right? have three questions for you. The f the first one is uh, when I played Tiny Lens uh, for the first time, and I'm a subscriber of Apple Arcade. I really mm. felt that uh, I don't know if you exploited that that way or not. I felt that could be a good um, business deal for you to try to um, reach the platform because I, I think it's perfect for Apple Arcade. 
I, I imagine playing Tiny Lands on my iPad Pro and um, it would be a, a, a match made in heaven because it, it looks like Tiny Lands really fits into Apple's catalog. Did you did you think about it? Yeah, actually okay. we got an offer for a publisher who went directly go to Apple Arcade. Okay. But you know, at, at certain times you need to decide whether like you have your budget, you have a, like a deadline yeah. and because Actually, when we started the develop of Tiny Lands, it was like the worst uh, moment here in Spain for the quarantine yeah. and everything. So at that moment, we need to decide like quick uh, what was the most effective path that we can took. But uh, we have that on the on the list, right? The, there is a lot of things that we can do with Tiny Lands after this. But another thing that I think is very important is we visualize also that Tiny Lands will be a perfect fit for Nintendo Switch. So yeah. we have that in mind because, you know, like it's a simple game that you can have in your console and you can play it when you're traveling. You, it doesn't require internet. So we have a lot of benefit of playing that way. So yeah. I think like a mobile application, it will come in the future Future that that I hope that it has succeeded and we, we can move to all the platforms too. But yes. In, in the case of the Apple Arcade, um... We apply it to the program for we apply it for Apple Arcade because you have to apply and if they select you then mm -hmm. then you, you you keep on working with them right because they ask for exclusivity in their platform or maybe to release it first with them a few time and then you can go and release uh, to the other platforms mm -hmm. but um, as Abraham mentioned it, we were in a like in a difficult time here in Spain yeah. uh, some budget problems and then we had to take uh, some decisions because we couldn't be waiting for an answer from Apple and we didn't we didn't know how how they how much time do they take if they see the game so we had to take like um, other actions and that was initially the game was uh, designed for for PC only but and in the progress of course with the vision of Nintendo Switch but um, and we decided to follow the path of PC in that moment and that's where we when the publishers came and then this, they they were they were inter he were it was they were interested in the game, so we couldn't like stay waiting for the Apple if they wanted to be yeah. on there or not because the time was wasn't on our side. Yeah, I, I was thinking you, you you come from El Salvador, which uh, as you as you told me it's uh, it's not a country that has a, a, a game development industry um, developed. Uh, Yes. passing the redundancy but what's your what what are your expectations like are, are you establishing yourself as a studio in spain which is a country that has for example in comparison with portugal a far more developed um video game industry uh mm. than we have uh, do you want to build an uh, to build a name for your studio and for yourselves and return to el salvador and help uh, develop the industry there or do you want to stay in in spain what are your uh, future expectations all right so i think like uh, there are like two points of view the first one is one if you're making your your one of your first games and you're starting in the industry uh, as we are right now i think like moving into a more related country can can have some benefits yeah because it happens to us that for example if you get to have a meeting with a publisher and you say they say where are you from? I am from El Salvador, and he doesn't even know where that country is. So that put you in a little bit of disadvantage than yeah. a studio that is established in Germany, you know, because yeah. if you're you're moving a lot of uh, amount of money of investment, you're gonna feel more like more reliability from uh, more not not near because it doesn't matter where the publisher is, but um, a must uh, a more renowned country yeah. than a country that perhaps has a lot of uh, maybe monetary transactions issues that you're not aware of uh, so that can be a little bit of a disadvantage so and but in the other point of view i think like for us if we got success with the games because it's not it's not going to be the first game we're going to make for nintendo switch or pc mm -hmm. but uh one of the vision that we have with my brother and the other the other uh, member team is like we can do a lot of things in a Salvador, you know, because there are a lot of talented people there yeah. that don't have the that didn't have the opportunity that we had, uh, because we are grateful that we were able to know a lot of people in the game industry, 
we were able to learn a lot of things that if we could have stayed in our country, we might not have been able to do yeah. or to learn. There is always like like uh, you can learn a lot, of, a lot of things on YouTube or on internet, whatever. But the there are thing. certain things. Yeah. yeah, it's not the same thing when you get to know the guy of, uh, you know, like uh, the one of the big companies here in Spain. Um, the guy is from like, Greece. The, the guy is from Greece. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. Uh, but you have so an advantage it, in El Salvador. I don't know if I, I, of, I believe you agree with me. Then again, Portugal is is much cheaper in terms of cost of living than the other European countries. El Salvador must mm. be cheaper to to live in. So if you build a name and you can establish yourself as a, a name in the industry, you could have the best of two worlds, which is developing your home uh, country, help the industry, uh, and and save a lot of money. So if you have an investment yep. in comparison for the global industry and you return to El Salvador, uh, development cost will be uh, much cheaper than in Spain because Spain isn't cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's for sure. Like, and, and I think like that's one of the main reasons uh, we could uh, make our country, El Salvador, like a good point of investment. Like we see ourselves like a publishers yeah. once we have uh, uh, a, a more uh, success. And you know, that's, this is like the effect of the snow involved, you know, like yeah, we're yeah. small right now, but uh, one thing happened, then another, then another, and that's it. Start to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And once we yeah. reach that point, we can move into El Salvador with a with a very good name, yeah. and we could say, "Hey, investors, we have all these success projects, and you can come here." And there is a lot of people better than us that has more talent, and they are willing to have new experiences with game development because. One of the things that we have is not like like from from Latin American people. I think like is we are very hard working, so we have like harsh uh, conditions always. So we are used to that. So we are used to give the best of us, even yeah. if we have everything against us. And I think that's one of the I can I relate. Know, like, what, I truly yeah, can relate. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, right. Yeah. yeah. So that's that thing that, that is a that is a a good thing about about yeah. us but uh but yes yes there is a long way to us but we are looking forward like not not just with the game development has a company and and it has an uh how to say like a like a salvadorian person it's like we have this dream like we can become a, a small publisher in latin america because there are a lot of people who are struggling with that because they have this problem that they they should move to europe or or united, united states State. just yeah, to yeah. get their game invested or the, the develop of the game because it's not really easy. I don't say that it's impossible because there are a lot of cases. But first of all, you need to have a company established or in the United States or in Europe. Like in Google Play, for example, in mobile, we have this issue that you cannot even make like enough purchases if you are from El Salvador. So that's <laughs> like a, like a default disadvantage that you have. So what you should, what you can do because google doesn't care about like people making games in el salvador because yeah. they say does people even make games so <laughs> it's not relevant for them right <laughs> do they or, have or worse in el salvador they have, <laughs> like, i, I know you have you, you in in uh, south america you have of course brazil is a huge country it's almost two-thirds of the, the 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 continent it's it's a different uh, country in terms of uh, gdp and everything but you can relate possibly relate some of the, the these adventures you have and how the communities from from my watch uh, from outside it looks like developers are helping uh, each other like that snowball effect you were saying of course in a much bigger country like brazil maybe in the a small scope it could help you in el salvador having upper three studio have success international success and it could be an engine to the success of other other yes. um, developers in el salvador it would be great to to see it I, I i would love to speak with you in five years and you telling me like okay so now we are, we are a publisher we are helping um latin american uh, studios from bolivia maybe uruguay i don't know um helping those kind of studios reach uh, um, a market which is global it would mm. be awesome to to have that guys really really yes. um I think I'm. Uh, we're so we're so focused on our conversation. It, it's great. I, I I told you. I, in our pre uh, session, we were already having 
a good time. But I think uh, who's watching us want to to see tiny lands <laughs> moving. Okay, maybe they are sick of the three of us. Like, so go away. Let me just show me the game. <laughs> and we're going to dive now on tiny okay. lands, which is a um, really relaxing game. And uh, a perfect game, game for what uh, uh, Virgilio was was saying, uh, which nowadays we we are so filled with um, well, we're always always on the run, and it's cool to have a game that um, allow us to stop a bit and like okay, just calm down and and um, enjoy something and relax. In Tiny Lands might be this, okay. First of all, it's obvious Tiny Lands is gorgeous. Gorgeous, okay. You are three okay. guys, three people d developing the game, isn't it? The yes. two of you, and yes, who is the people. third of the Hyper 3? Who is the third person? And the third person is, is Oscar. He is also from El Salvador. Okay. He has been with us like uh, for, uh, I think, like three years, right? Three he, years. He's yeah. also and your like twin. Three years with us. He's your secret yeah. twin. No, no, <laughs> no, it's not the secret twin. <laughs> 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 no, no. But yeah, three three people only. He is the concept artist, and I'm in charge of the animation, uh, all the visual design, uh, all the aesthetic, uh, um, and the 3D model, and yeah. all the things that we put, like the effects, all the art or art part. And Isaac is in charge of the development of the game. So we were lucky that, uh, for example, we complement each other. So you know, like sometimes you only have only the developer or you only have only the designer with the great idea but no idea how to make a game so at least for us that has been like a, we we have keep like this small team but very efficient team so we think like this formula can work for a lot of indie games that doesn't have a big budget so you need to to find like key people that can complement abilities and skills to develop something and to have the will to execute and and finish something right because that's one of the in the, the worst indie issues that people have that like you start something but it took you three five six years and you never end that project so you just need to take like small steps and that will get you to whatever you want to reach in in a couple of years but start something something and finish something i think is one of the best like practices that a lot of people need to need to do are you developing the game full time at this moment yes 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 okay. full time yeah that, that's great to be able to do that yeah mm -hmm. uh, another thing i i asked you uh when we were on our press pre-session uh was if you looked into playstation talents for a possibility maybe not for tiny lens because you're going to release it uh expectedly mm. in the next few months isn't it but for future projects do you believe that could be um could be a cool way for hyper 3 studio to 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 submit a game for for a playstation uh project a iberian uh play, playstation project yes for us I, it's it's like we are uh taking uh, um, whatever the opportunity can uh increase or or our skills or probability to have success on the market we know that we need uh, help from, ex from experts from other people that is already there and um we uh for us it's, it's a it's a good opportunity and i i think it's going to be on the path of the next year of the things we're we, have, we will have to take in count mm. we yes, uh, I, think mm -hmm. I think it's very important also like uh Having this mind of uh, not sticking with the first project and, and stop there, but uh, keep growing and growing uh, as a company as a prof and as a professional. Because I see myself like in three, four years, not making the games, but only directing them, or maybe all this knowledge that we have, that uh, we can ensure that with the small things that has worked, a small project that has got the publishment, that we got the investment and everything for a small project. I think like. We can have like some of the good practices that we can share later on on other people and a lot of indie people who are struggling with their projects uh, and what what at least from our point of view what have worked for us. Uh, so I think like PlayStation talent is, is on the path of what we're looking to grow more as a professionals. So I think like it's it's gonna be cool if we can if we can get there with other projects that we have. Yeah. So yes. Do you already have a next project on the pipeline? Yes, we got another project uh, called Robot Force. 
uh, which is uh, quite different from the concept of this relaxing game. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a big one. That, that's not a relaxing game. <laughs> yeah, that's not a relaxing game. Uh, it, it's very hardcore and, and stressing, so it's it's the, the opposite of this game. It's a gore uh, battle that, royale game with no with, with lots of yeah, blood you know, and decapitations. <laughs> It, it, and when publishers look at your your work, we're like, so we develop Tiny Lens and we develop this game where you decapitate uh, people and get lots of blood. Is it the idea uh, to show uh, your uh, entire scope? Uh, <laughs> uh, right now, it's uh, on the on the nearest scope is if uh, we have we have been also preparing uh, the, the next concept from the for the DLC okay. uh, for Tiny Lens. We are working on that right now because if if the game goes well. Then we already have uh, the concept of the next world that's going to be released later on if everything goes well. Uh, but but yes, we also have uh, other uh, projects. We are also uh, for us this is going to be like a great experience to see how Tiny Land uh, goes on Steam and also on Nintendo Switch too. And if, of course, if these games uh, it's a great hit, it's go if it, if it goes well. Then most surely the next uh, game is going to be probably more related to this type of games, right? Because we need to all, all go go um, step by step. I just found a small, small bug on the hitbox for this. Um, I can't remember how it, it's. A, how do we say Nenufar in, in English? I can't remember how. Tadpole. Did you notice? Uh, Tadpole. Nenuf, Nenufar? How do you say in Spanish? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nympha. Nympha. The logo. I think it's Nympha. This. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This here. Here. Can you see my? I'm. I'm going to wait uh, for the delay. I just. I just found yes. a small hitbox. A hitbox. Um. Uh. Bug. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're experts on yeah. crashing the games during in the X. So. Uh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Which is helping. <laughs> But I, I have uh, 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 um, Nuno Marx is, is uh, well. You have several people uh, saying your game is really beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. You you can't avoid it. Um, Nuno Marx is uh, is telling: Is there any interactivity with the scenarios, such as in covering hidden parts of the environment? Where? Not right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, did you finish the question? Yes. Sorry, it's a water lily. Thank you, Nun Marx. Water lily in English. Yeah. Ah, uh, water lily. Yeah. He was water asking if, um, yeah, if we'll be able to uncover parts of the the scenario, the the, the scenario, the diorama, to find some of the differences. Uh, not no. Not okay. right now. Uh, there there isn't this this type of feature. Um, uh, this is because. Uh, the, it's a, like a more basic interactivity on, in, in the game. And what we have done is, for example, in the game, you're going to see, of course, for example, if, if you play another level, another world, you, you will have like environment, like it's raining, where you're having thunders, you're having like leaf uh, falling down, yeah. snow. But right now, there, there is not that type of interactivity. We, we wanted to make it like, just simpler, just rotate, uh, explore the environment, and also easy to navigate uh, within the game. Yeah, and I think like one of the main core of the game is like the visual aspect is like, how do we combine this beautiful aesthetic with a relaxing experience, right? Because uh, there is a small cap between uh, frust frustration and simplicity in the game. So we're very careful that we don't add any other things that may complicate the experience of the game yeah, yeah. so we we usually run several tests just to see how frustrated people get on the first time that we make a test of the game like uh you know like if you never have test that game before and someone played they will definitely got frustrated because we are used to see the game every day so we think now that maybe this difference is going to be very easy but now as soon as we try the game with other people, people go like, and the first level got frustrated because he never find the last difference. So I think that that was not good. So we tried to manage and to see, okay, we have four very easy, but there is one very hard. But in, if, you, if we interact with the environment, we might block a little bit of that difficulty because if you move something or you change the perspective and that's, that, that maybe will block 
the difference. It will lead to people that never find the difference, exactly. So that's why we, we decided this concept of having everything like trees. Uh, so we can ensure that whatever angle you're looking at, you have the chance to find that. Difference. Okay. So that I think that's where it comes, like the balance of the game and adding more features, things like that. Uh, instead of uh, making that a mechanic of the game, maybe it will complicate the game. And we don't want to get to that point. We want to keep it like keep it simple. And I think that works very well. And the next test that we did, uh, because people like there, there is a there is a reaction that I like is that people start to get frustrated a little bit when the, they don't find the difference. But as soon as they discover, they say, OK, it's not it's not the game fault. The difference was there and I was not seeing. Yeah, so yeah. that's what that's a, that's a good feedback for us. Mm -hmm. Do you already have an idea of the, um, if you can disclose the, the, the price range you're imagining Tiny Lens to, to be? Yeah, the, the price uh, range right now is going to be uh, from around, uh, well, it still depends on the discussion of the publisher, but the estimated price can be around for 5 to 6.99 around. I think it is, right, Abraham? How many levels yeah. are you expecting for the base game? It's going to have oh. 50, 50 levels. Okay, that, so it's, yeah, it's, I think it's pretty accessible. Yes. Yeah, I think it's like, we, we did that because uh, at first, uh, one of the best practices that we learn here in the Accelerator program is like make a research of what other kind of games they have. And, you know, like th there is a niche for this. And we find out that in, in YouTube, there were a lot of channels, like uh, they just put like an image and to find the difference, they have like million of views. So we say, okay, there might be a niche for this. And we actually find out that in Nintendo Switch, there's only one game related to find the difference. And and it's uh, not 3D. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's not that cheap. And, and actually they use stock photos and there is nothing about that game that it may look beautiful for that. Like it's not relaxing because the images are stretched and not a good quality for the price, I think. So we will offer that opportunity. Like we can find that spot on the market for our game, like being an accessible game. We know it's a casual game. So, and we don't want to compete like with the big games right now and because there are gonna be big games like every two, three months. So we want to make an accessible game that people will enjoy. You know, there is a lot of people who, who are in quarantine with their child and you want some game that, uh, yeah, you can spend time with family with this game yeah, so yeah. i think like we enter into this category of family friendly games so we, we want to also make it accessible right so that's why yeah the price is going to be that range and uh, we're planning to releasing a, a dlc uh probably like one or maybe two months later after the launch but yes yes that's when I look at Tiny Lens, I, I remind myself of a game we had as finalists, I believe, three or four years ago. And I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the, the name, but it's kind of a Where's Wally, Where's Waldo kind of game, mm. but in black and white. Like you have uh, several items to find and you have to look for them in, on the map. And, and I was surprised that the, the studio had uh, success with the game and they develop they just released a sequel and I was like yeah there is market for this kind of games mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah we should yeah this is yes th there is a market yes yeah and it's cool to usually you know like puzzle games like uh, most of the people think that there is not much niche about that but uh, you need to be uh, uh, aware that you're not gonna sell five million copy of with a puzzle game right yeah. now like like an indie studio so but uh, as we have this like uh with this say with isaac we say i rather prefer like one one percent of uh uh i don't know like uh one one hundred thousand a hundred thousand that just sell like a uh, hundred copies right so there is a niche there is a big niche of puzzle game it's not that big like a triple a game triple a games but it's, it's big enough for our studio. So I think that we can just like move other projects with this one. And that's what we're looking for, like, right? This is, that's our, our strategy. And that, I think like it reflects on the budget of the project, yeah. on, the, on the execution of the project, because you are aware of how much you, you might 
uh, get close, right? Yeah. And uh, actually making the research of other related game that may look similar, uh, give you an estimation of how much you can invest on the production of the game. That, that's what I was going to ask you because I I, mm. I, I, I understand your strategy. It looks like a, a solid strategy. And you know you won't get as much return as you could with other genres, but at the same time you know that the development cost is is um, more manageable than if you you try to do something else. So yeah, it looks like a cool standpoint to to start your your company. Uh, mm -hmm. You must already have predicted how many copies you you expect to sell to 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 balance everything and to to get yeah. even with this so yeah it looks like a cool strategy and i believe when you release on on switch uh you might get a cool boost because it, it's a perfect game for for yeah that specific platform and uh, has has an exclusive of this interview uh we have already uh, <laughs> we're already working on the nintendo switch version so yeah. so good it looks <laughs> it looks yeah yeah it's recommendable looks... for nintendo switch Yes. Can you do me a favor? So, Can you open one puzzle? I was curious because of the um, the um, the, pro the, uh, the proportion of the rectangle. Rectangle. Okay. That, I was just going to ask you that, and you just show me your <laughs> Nintendo Switch. <laughs> we okay, I'm gonna. Step. <laughs> so, um, okay, can I? I don't know if if you can yeah, see yeah, from we can, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. loading. So. Cool. So yeah, 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 yeah. You. It works well. You sacrifice. Yeah, and the good thing is like yeah. like the ratio of Nintendo Switch is, is pretty much similar to a to a screen of a PC. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really struggling with the last with the last one. Don't tell me what it is. Uh, is it uh, the hardest one, or I'm being dumb as hell? Probably. <laughs> probably I'm being dumb as hell. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think if you are, I'm I'm not very sure if in the version you are playing, if you press the key T. Um, it should appear like a grid. Yeah, yeah. So people, people on the chat can help. You know. Yeah, oh, yeah, they, they can this help. is a this is a cool future for <laughs> for streaming. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it's not like official, but we we thought about that uh, for it's streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interact yeah. with their communities. So it's gonna be fun. Like, hey, hey, guys, help me out to find yeah. the difference. And then you have like like a, a relaxing chat time with your community. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. can be like very useful for that. So we can we can. We can test it today. <laughs> really well thought, yeah. guys. Does anyone know where uh, where is the last difference? Because I'm I'm struggling to find it. Please point me out on the grid, the, the number and the no, the letter. Please. Yeah, there, there is like a, a, some some small issue there on the letter, but you can. Yeah, yeah. So, but the game so is really so relaxing. Just check this. I'm I'm having a cool conversation with you guys. Oh, of course, yes. I'm not 100% focused on the game, but it's a cool <laughs> game. You you were telling you you were speaking with the example. I have two kids, as you know, and as I told you before, and um, yeah, most of the time you can't focus completely on your game. So it's a cool game to share with your family, and it's a cool game to to spend a bit of time and to relax after a day of work. I'm I'm feeling, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I I don't feel any bit frustrated to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think because you're not like really concentrated because of the, the the screaming and everything. But I think like if you're 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 alone and you invest like one minute, you will find it like easier because those are the easiest level. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> we're, we're still um, in the we're still uh, currently um, working on some um, reworks on the level, small details to make it more like a feeling, small mm -hmm. small details. Uh, we are also evaluating the, the different difficulties. Yeah. We are reordering the level, uh, like which is the first one, which is the second, then which is the third one, and so on. Like, of, of course, in this version, it's not like a, the final order. It's not like uh, the final uh, difference difficulty. It might vary, but uh, basically, um, it's, it's for like to understand how the game works and how is the game. You're fine, right? You're fine. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm try, happy. try to play another another of other world, I think. So people can see other other kind of environments. Uh, one of the things that we like about this game is like we want to create the mood of 
where are you you placing that? What are you seeing? That? You know, like one of, another of uh, the best practices that we learn here is like you need to be to live to have like a like a memorable level. So we try to make like a small story on each level, even though everything is frozen. You yeah. can like kind of assume that something is happening. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. There, there is a story behind that, even if, even though the game is not narrative because it's not narrative at all. I mean, like the translation has been the, like the easiest work for us because there's literally no translation for the game. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but uh, we want to ensure like the communication and the story is gonna be told by itself. Like you see the environment, like something is happening. There are other other environments. For example, this has this environment that you are playing right now has changed a little bit on or the current version that we have. Uh, but there are a lot of levels that tell like a story. Uh, you're gonna see like the ocean world. Uh, there are a lot of things that uh, can give you like some hints of what is happening, and that's that's why we think that it's very important. Like even being a simple game, like find the difference, but you can tell stories between what, what is happening in the diorama. And you can extrapolate. When I entered this diorama, I was imagining after seeing the deers and the arrow that someone missed mm -hmm. the, the the hunting <laughs> on the um, yeah. yeah on the deers. I have I have a question here. Um, trying to manage my okay. So uh, like find the difference, but you can tell stories between what, what is happening in your diorama. And you can extrapolate. When I entered this diorama, I was imagining after seeing the deers and the arrow. Mm -hmm. One second, okay. Uh, how did you come up with successively harder, more clever ways of hiding the differences? Mm. All right. Yeah, so I we, think we like have, that. Uh, yeah. Go, go ahead. I, I will answer on the visual side. Like, uh, we on purpose put some, like, we play with the colors, but we have three variation of the difference that it can be like scale, uh, rotation, and colors. So okay. that's like, to decide that, we took like, like two months for, for Isaac and me, like, uh, think about. How are we going to put the like the how to say like the game restrictions so we the can rules, the rules the rules of the game right uh, so there they change in these three uh, variations right but uh, we actually have you know like the vision the vision of the camera the angle and everything there are some blind spots that we need to avoid so we need to be careful with that because there might be some angles that people won't see the difference and we don't want the people frustrate. So finding the balance of that, we create like like a hot spot map. Uh, we have this like a, like a quadrangle, how to say like the base. Uh, so we try to avoid like uh, specific points because we know that at some rotations or scales become like a, like a blind points. Uh, because you yes. can't rotate the camera, you can zoom, and the the focal mm. point is is fixed, isn't it? And you don't yes. want to change that. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we have yeah. we have certain rules. For example, don't don't uh, avoid putting a difference at the corner of the of the base because when you zoom, you cannot see that part. So yeah, yeah. It, the larger the object, the larger the difference is oh, in, in terms of a scale, it can be more uh, at the borders. And the smaller, it, it should be like kind of up to the center. So that's why we uh, like there. Uh, that's the rules that we use to design every level. And of course, uh, we test the levels um, uh, so we can know the difficulty. So it, it gives you uh, it gives us uh, a good feedback, and then we 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 can understand better if we have made it like well or it's too hard or it's mm -hmm. too way too easy so it, it... yeah we put also like uh, some uh, uh, analytics on, on each level so we can know how long does people take on yeah. making certain levels and depending of a certain amount of time we use we, we can rework the level or make an evaluation of each uh, difference so there's a lot of re I'll say like reciprocity on this process like uh, making it again, try it, testing on each level, so we don't like go straight away from the first idea that we got. Uh, but we try to make it like a balance, fair, and that's as I told you before. Like it's very difficult to make simple games. I don't. It's, it's difficult because uh, you, 
there is a you don't want the player to get frustrated but at the same time you don't want that they feel like the game is so easy because they're gonna have to finish it really quick right yeah and the, so, the value the value the, the the player the consumer gives for the the, the game uh how they measure it in terms of um content it, that's that's the hard part to to balance yeah um yeah i i got i wanted to play more to be honest i just um finished these sure. three levels and uh it's a, it's a really did you feel I, i believe you asked your families and your friends to to play your game be them uh hardcore gamers or casual gamers i believe yeah, different opinions helped you on the feedback for for your game um did you feel that people that that um reward that you were telling me like people get frustrated when they don't find the difference but when instantly you find you get that boost of uh, reward uh, internally and do you feel that people know when to stop playing do you believe someone could play tiny lens on one sitting like be so invested that they couldn't <laughs> Uh, stop playing until they finish uh we had like uh, for example one of the publishers that contacted us they asked us for for the demo so they can try it and then so to see how the, the game worked but at the end we received an email from them and say hey our 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 designer couldn't stop playing the game until he until he found all the difference so they they took all the i mean he was like like so um like i don't say stick to the game yeah, until yeah. he finished everything. So he found every, all difference in, in one run. So um, it, right now we still haven't tested like the full version on in how much time someone can take. Yeah. It will depend on, on the testing uh, that we that we do. Um, what, what we avoid to, to do is, for example, I know that, that my wife is going to play the game and then say, oh, okay, okay, this everything is good. and but. But we try to, to to use like more external people who, who never have tried a game, people who's who's gonna who who probably don't play games. Yeah. So for us it's good because if these people who doesn't play games, they feel this game is relaxing, it's cool, it's it's beautiful, and it, it gives you like another point of view that is gonna be easy to play for, for everyone. Yeah. Of of yeah. course, um aiming to the right title is it's gonna be better. Yeah, I, th I think we're actually like aiming for like new Nintendo Switch users, you know, like the, a lot of people has get into Nintendo games and everything since like having the console have been like really accessible, I think. Uh, so we, our audience might be in that spot, right? People who were starting, who not invest like 10, 15 hours playing other kind of like long games, but, uh, and people who have like, uh, I mean, like when you make a game, sometimes you put yourself in an example because you make a game because you feel there is a there is an empty space in the market or yeah. there is something that you want specifically to play, but you don't find it. And, uh, you know, like I play a lot of Nintendo Switch and I think like I, I, I need a game that I can be like simple, aesthetic because I don't have time because I have a lot of work to do. And the only requirement, like five minutes, three minutes, I don't know. And then I just turn off the switch, fall asleep and then maybe play tomorrow. So that kind of game is like really difficult to find like, and that what we're looking in tiny lands is like, you have a beautiful landscape, something is happening. Uh, you can play it at night. I, I imagine myself like uh, just before sleep, like stay with this, with the Nintendo Switch with, with my uh, coat and, and in a cold day or having a coffee uh, and just playing a little bit. That, that's all like, it's a fun time that you're gonna spend maybe with the, with the, with the children's Uh, they're gonna like it. it it's a cool but, game for yeah. transports when when mm. the pandemic ends, of course, and people get to walk around more. It's a cool game to um, enter the the buzz and well find some differences and stop. You, you don't feel that like you're interrupting uh, abruptly your your gameplay with other games. It's harder. Like oh, I can't stop now because I'm in the middle of a fight, yes. a level, whatever. And like this, you you yeah. never feel like you're getting interrupted because the game has no time. Yeah. Well, the game is waiting for you. Like if you want to dedicate one hour or two minutes, uh, it depends on you. Everybody can get something mm -hmm. from the game. I think uh, it's yeah. a good niche. And, and I, I, I understand your point of view, like you're a developer and as a, as a gamer, as a consumer, you felt like 
there's something missing. There's 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 this niche that that might be missing, and we can well, we can make money from it because this is a business mm. most of all. And yes, uh, although video games are um, video games are for me it's an artistic expression and a cultural expression. It's also a business. So uh, it's it's cool for you to 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 have found this this little space and. And then again, congratulations! Your your game is with three people doing this is uh, amazing because the game is so solid. It's a so such a simple concept and so well executed. <laughs> really, congratulations! Okay, well, thank you. Congratulations! Thank you. I, I don't. I, I'll. I think I will ask people to. Do you have any questions to uh, Isaac? And did you call him uh, Abraham? Yeah, yes, Abraham. <clears throat> yeah, okay. it's my secondary name. Okay. Well, I usually use with Helio, but yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was a, that <laughs> was a cool, a cool. So twin A and twin B, you can be like player one, player two, whatever you can call it, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so does anyone want to ask uh, something to Isaac or Virgilio uh, about Tiny Lands or? the future what's the name of the next game robo robo force no robot force robot force, robot yes. force. yeah robot force. does anyone want to ask them <laughs> how, how is it going to be can you share something with us uh, is it in secrecy does anyone want to ask something by the way did you guys uh, return to el salvador since the the beginning of the pandemic did you have the opportunity uh. to go there no, we have we, we cannot like we haven't traveled to El Salvador. Yeah, like, we have been like like a year since we came yeah we here. have a year yeah yeah we haven't been there. How but is maybe, how is everything maybe there? Maybe in the future we can come back. How is the pandemic going there? Yeah, well, they I took control in uh, very uh, with stage. time. Cool. Not like Spain, <laughs> but <laughs> they took uh, very uh, measures to reduce the deaths by COVID. So nice. it wasn't so bad. Okay, that's that's great. Yes. Maybe maybe the government took this seriously. It took it very seriously. Yeah, because you have a huge neighbor neighbor ish country that like Brazil that we know how unfortunately yeah. things are going. It's yes. it's cool that um El Salvador managed to, to control this. Um so any questions for Isaac or Virgilio? Does anyone is anyone um, anxious to play Tiny Lands? Because a little bit told me that it's really close to being released. <laughs> maybe yes. maybe before Christmas you'll be able to play Tiny Lands with your Hopefully. families. <laughs> Hopefully, yes. Anyone? I I I don't know if you. I, I just I'm reading uh, Alejandro Mendes. I don't know if do you uh, know him. Alejandro is part of if the other member of the team. Oh, so okay. He Hello, Alejandro. One of the questions. <laughs> he was explaining yeah uh nunu i i forgot to ask you this but nunu was asking how do you what what's the um, how do you come up with the themes for the levels because we we watched these three levels being played but you already told us that the um, the themes uh vary uh as far as you as you progress in the game and alejandro was telling that um you imagine different scenarios or stories that could happen in each of those worlds that is what we take as inspiration for every level. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty much like the base of, uh, we always like these kind of rules, like we need to be like a memorable things. Yeah. What is the story behind what we are doing? And the good thing about this game is like, it's expandable, right? Mm -hmm. We have right now like five worlds. We have like the forest world, the ocean world, the spooky world, uh, the snow world and the Asia world. So okay. we, 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 you can make like very, you can be like very thematic with everything. And uh, on the upcoming DLC that we have, like we're not gonna say it right now, but uh, we have like very like a theme based concept that we can exploit because you know, like the good thing about the Ramas is that you can put literally everything that exists. Like yeah. you, can, you, can, you can create like abstract dioramas you can create like interior dioramas. You can create like food dioramas. We don't know. Like uh, this is a very expandable game. And what we want is like this can be like a daily recurrent game that people play like like just for having fun, not competitive, not anything. But uh, you you will get used to these kind of games. Like this is the new newspaper 
yeah. find the difference that, that I remember that I didn't read the newspaper, but I just but go you straight the... to the yeah, 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 to yeah. the comic <laughs> and find the difference yeah, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. pencil and, and start to find it and then I throw the newspaper. So I think like <laughs> we can like evolve in this step with this game. Like you have the Nintendo Switch, you 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 have you play like five games, five, five levels, and then you notice that there's new content upcoming. So that's uh, a good thing you know, to keep like uh, n- nutrition that's right like feeding the game to create more content and more content so you're more like relevant to a lot of people so we're did, hoping the best for the game did you study the possibility of including some kind of a competitive mode like uh, imagine having a connection with facebook and uh, having your performance timed with uh, your friends did you did you study some some mode like this we would love to have this idea you know like nintendo switch has starting to make like mario competitive yeah. mode tetris mode yeah. you know like 99 uh, people playing so you know, imagine like having 20 people playing one ge- random generated level yeah and uh, as soon as the first complete like he gets like more ranking point like that's thinking in big of the game okay so that would be good to have like, you know, like let me follow up on that for, that for helio because uh you just said something that um are you thinking of extending the the replayability of Tiny Lens uh, by introducing some kind of um, precisely generated um, uh, levels? Like you uh, you told me you already have uh, your rules like color, scale, mm-hmm. uh, the 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 place in the um, the place in the diorama where you can have small or big uh, big differences, and mm-hmm. all of those. I'm not a programmer, but I I feel are pretty easy rules to 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 determine to an algorithm of procedurally generated levels. Would you study th- something like that for Tiny Lens to have this kind of uh-huh. replayability, like an infinite mode? It can it can uh, the game has the like we we have the rules ready, we have everything ready, we have all clear. Uh, but yes, the game can. Maybe in the, in the future, uh, yes, it can, because it can be procedurally generated the, every level, and then you play. Also, the, another thing that Abraham d- didn't mention is that uh, in the case of Nintendo Switch, we were also thinking that you could play this game with two players. Yeah. So you have two, two, two the cursors. Small, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah, long, yeah. and then you play with your brother, with you, the two kids plays, and hey, let's see who finds first all the five differences. Yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna, I found it that. So it's it's we're also still uh, open to that. Cool ideas. Yeah. Let me just bec- we just got on our stream uh, Gonzalo Lopez, which is a friend of ours. He's also a writer for Nintendo Life. Uh, Gonzalo, you just missed the um, announcement and the first images of Tiny Lens running on Switch. So after take, this take ends, after this ends, you have to go back. Uh, or maybe Isaku is going to show you again because <laughs> yeah, like, you just you just missed the the world world <laughs> announcement the and first. first images. Yeah, world <laughs> first for Tiny Lens for Switch, and uh, let's see if you will cover that for Nintendo Life. Who knows? Uh, we we I can I can sure <laughs> we, we we can make the handshake with Isaac and uh, Virgilio. <laughs> yeah, Gonzalo is already saying, "Don't worry, I'll go send the scoop." I have a, okay. a I have a last curiosity. Alejandro is your artist, isn't it? Oscar, Alejandro, is it the same person? Yeah, no? he's, he's the concept artist. Okay, so uh, we were discussing how each level is created. What's the the, the basis, the genesis for each uh, each level? Does it start with a, a rough sketch from Alejandro? Like, I had this idea of doing this, or, it, or it's the other way around. Like, one of you says, I imagine... Um, Aquatic world. I imagine this. How, how did this end? It? And follow-up question: Will Alejandro be able to uh, share with us in the future the those sketches? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. Actually, so the the process is like uh, usually I start with the creation of the concept of the world. Okay. So we want to base it on the concept of the world that we do. We establish, for example, uh, uh, let's say the ocean world, right? So ocean. It can be a lot of things, right? And what can happen in the ocean and how do we bring uh, uh, like a slice of uh, dimension of the ocean yeah. into the game, right? So for example, there is a like a like a reef, level reef, 
reef, like you said. Yeah, reef, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, reef. Yeah, so everything is underwater, like all the elements is going to be underwater elements. We put, instead of having like rain, uh, leaf fallings, uh, wind, we put bubbles. So we have we have like some kind of like a canon base of the visual design. So uh, and, and it's very interesting how we manage like the concept boards because we, we can we can choose what kind of what what uh, light of the day it's going to be. It's going to be night, sunset, morning. Uh, uh, how it's going to be any particles like raining, snow, dust, everything that we can like exploit for environments, we can put it on the game. Uh, so that's pretty much the process, and we look for inspiration. You know, like there is Pinterest, so you can find a lot of visual reference of yeah. the mood and... that you want to share. And I think one of the most important things that we have exploited here is the post processing of Unity. So, and using the color correction, like I, I work a lot of in the visual industry and, and and design and animation, and I like a lot that you can manage these uh, post processing profiles for each kind of level. So you can give a like a cinematic mood to each level. And that's when it comes really beautiful. Uh, if people can like look on our Twitter, we share like the making of of the level. And you can see when you turn off the lighting and everything looks really like flat and plain. Yeah. And you can see the boost of post-processing that give you to the project, to the visual aspect. And that's pretty much the process that we do. We decide all of that things first. And then we, we make like a random sketch, like positioning, what is going to be the, the heavy of the of the visual uh, distribution and, of the level. And I think uh, just to finance that, and uh, one of the key rules that we have when we are doing a concept is put this scene or put this level a title. For example, mm, yeah. the witch house, the, the lighthouse. So the level can be able to make you feel like uh, whenever, for example, if I play a game, I say, ah, I play the, the lighthouse level. It, so it can be easy to remember and stays on the mind of the players. Yeah. I play the, the witch house. I play the night on the, on the, on the beach, for example. Things, things like that. The golden tree and things. That's one of the key rules that we have when we create every level, every new level, every new concept. You must put it a title. You okay. must be able to put a title. Yes. Isaac Firgilio, it's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, really excited to 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 see where Tiny Lens can can go. Then again, congratulations on uh, what you're developing. It's a great game. Uh, Thanks. I truly hope to that the the pandemic goes goes away, and next year yeah. we'll be able to have you visit Lisbon during uh, Indiex, the physical edition. It would be a pleasure for us to have you here and show you, Thank you show you our city and we'd like also yeah. to wish you uh, the very best for your company and for tiny lens okay thanks a lot Thank for you. this Thank this, you very this much hour for okay isaac and virgilio see you next time and uh for those watching in the next uh, 50 minutes we'll be back i can't remember which game it will be but you can check on the website i'm sorry uh, but we'll return in 50 minutes See you later. Right. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Adios. <laughs>